What's up everybody? Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. So I'm going to continue on my series of trying to help you guys understand a little bit about how we select serotonin reuptake inhibitor medications when they all seem to have a similar efficacy and there's not too much really separating them in terms of making these decisions. So today I'm going to cover the medication fluoxetine or Prozac and it really does have a couple of important things going for it and a couple of drawbacks that I'm going to point out in this video for you guys today. So the first thing I'll say about this medication is that it has a really long half-life. So then you might ask, well, what does that mean and how does that translate to something clinically meaningful, either for someone who's prescribing or taking this medication? So I'll explain. Long half-life indicates that it's going to have the lowest risk of all the serotonin reuptake inhibitor medications of serotonin withdrawal problems. While serotonin withdrawal syndrome or problems are not necessarily dangerous, it does create a fear in many of my patients that there's an addiction or an addictive component to these medications, and that will sometimes cause people to avoid psychiatric treatment in the future, and it might cause them to also avoid psychiatric medication when it may be beneficial or useful for them. So serotonin withdrawal is something we want to avoid, and this is a medication that kind of helps you do it on its own because of its long half-life. You don't have to do some elaborate tapering schedule in order to avoid it. You can just kind of avoid it based on the medication's properties. So that's the first point. The second point I want to make, which is actually a pretty important one to most of my patients, and that is that fluoxetine has less risk for weight gain than other SSRIs. And you might say to me, well, does that mean it has no risk? For weight gain, no, I don't want to say that it couldn't potentially cause weight gain in certain patients and some people might experience some weight gain from the medication. But when you look at the research and when you look at the literature body, what you find is that there is a small but meaningful difference in weight gain. And you might then say, well, why does that matter? Well, of course, in general, it matters. People don't want to gain weight for no reason. And they certainly don't want to gain weight because of medication. But there's a special population I'm thinking of when I'm talking about this weight gain, and that is that patients with eating disorders. So you might not know this, but fluoxetine is one of the only medications that we have that's approved for two eating disorders that I can think of off the top of my head. The first one is bulimia. Most of the time in, that, in, the, in eating disorders, there's not really a good indication for medication, but this is actually FDA approved for that disorder. The other place where fluoxetine shines is in binge eating disorder. So if somebody is dealing with, obviously with a bulimia, they're not going to want to gain weight, right? They already are having a body image disturbance, right? So if you can avoid weight gain, it's going to be a really good thing in that population. And obviously somebody who has binge eating disorder, they can oftentimes be obese or oftentimes have extra weight already because of the binge eating that they've engaged in. So we don't want to cause any additional weight gain. So that's where this medication can also really shine. Now, if you're going to treat somebody for bulimia or binge eating disorder, the dose of fluoxetine is generally between 60 and 80 milligrams. So it's on the higher end of what we normally prescribe. Also, Another place where this medication is important, and I used to do this all the time when I was in training, and especially when I was in the child adolescent psychiatry clinic, is obviously in pediatric depression. Now, its approval goes all the way down to eight years of age. So children eight years of age or above could take this medication, and many SSRI medications have tried to gain FDA approval for pediatric depression and have failed. So it's a testament to the quality of this medication and also the effectiveness of it that it's gained, or efficacy of it, that it's gained approval in pediatric populations. So that's another place where phylloxetine can be really helpful. The final points I want to make are actually the downsides to phylloxetine. What are some of the reasons we might want to avoid phylloxetine? So one of the main reasons is drug interactions. And I feel like in these videos I've been talking a lot about drug interactions because I'm trying to help you understand that drug interactions are important and it's something we have to be mindful of when we're prescribing these medications because many of them do have drug interactions. So what is the interaction I'm talking about here with fluoxetine? Well, it is a potent inhibitor of both cytochrome P450-2D6 
N2C19. So it's going to inhibit 2D6 and 2C19. And if you watch the other videos in the series, then you're going to probably know at this point that 2D6 and 2C19 are pretty important in the metabolism of many drugs. So we, so in, if you're going to inhibit those, those uh, enzymes, what you're going to find is this is fluoxetine has the ability to raise the level of many medications. Some examples of medications that will be raised as a result of this inhibition is propanolol, which is sometimes prescribed off-label for anxiety disorders and augmentation medications for depression, specifically things like aripiprazole or Abilify, which is commonly prescribed for as an adjunctive medication for depression that does not respond to the first medication, and also uh, Braxpiprazole, which is sort of like aripiprazole, it's a newer version, also known as Braxalti, and then Risperidone, Bupropion, and tricyclic antidepressants. So it can raise the level of all of those medications because of this meaningful inhibition of 2D6 and 2C19. And I talked about in one of my previous videos that combining bupropion with a medication that's going to raise its levels that has 2D6 inhibition might not be the best choice. Another important point about these interactions is that they last for up to six weeks after starting the medication. So when, after stopping the medication, excuse me. So when you stop the medication, you can still have meaningful inhibition of 2D6 and 2C19 that can lead to increased levels of these medications. So be mindful of that as one of the more uh, one of the downsides of potentially selecting Prozac or fluoxetine. In some cases, interestingly enough, instead of inhibiting and raising levels of medication, it can actually render medications less effective. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that it can prevent their conver the conversion to active metabolites. So specifically at 2D6. So there are some medications, I'm gonna give you three examples that need to be converted to an active metabolite before they are actually do what they're supposed to do in the body. And those are tamoxifen, tramadol, a pain medication, and hydrocodone, another opioid pain medication. So tamoxifen, tramadol, hydrocodone need to be converted into active metabolites before they are effective in the body. And that 2D6 uh, interaction can certainly prevent that, making these medications less effective, which is not a good thing if someone is in pain, let's say. So those are the two main downsides. I think we covered a lot here. I think the main points about fluoxetine to keep in mind is that long half-life, low risk of serotonin withdrawal, less propensity for weight gain, it's approved in several eating disorders. You can use it for binge eating disorder. You can use it for bulimia. You can also use it for pediatric populations where depression is an issue. And then the two things you want to be mindful of is that 2D6 inhibition and 2C19 inhibition, as well as the potential to prevent the conversion of certain drugs to their active metabolites. So those are the main things that I want to make and the main points I want to make about Prozac or fluoxetine. If you guys have questions or comments, drop them below. I'm happy to answer them. And if you like the videos, please consider subscribing to the channel as it helps me to keep making this content.